Hello there, you're listening to Linda Pinizzato of The Condo Expert on the Hayes FM. You know, today we're going to be talking about Go Transit and Metrolinx. Did you know 1967 evolved from single Go trains along Lake Ontario? That was Go Transit and more than a billion riders to date in Go Train, Go Bus. It's pretty amazing, isn't it, when you look at the numbers? I mean, we've had tremendous population growth, but wow, more than a billion riders. Today we're going to be speaking with Mandeep Jazal, and he is the team lead at the Strong Community Office uh, for the Georgetown South Project. I don't know if you know, but Go Transit actually is a division of Metrolinx, and you've seen Metrolinx all over the news right now because they need some money. And we're going to get into all of these topics and certainly uh, in and around this strong community. So, Mandeep, welcome to the show. It's great to have you here today. Thank you, Linda. Thank you for uh, having me here. Oh, you're welcome. You know, it's uh, it's great because everybody wants to know. I mean, they take a look at things in the press, but they, they want a little, little bit more about uh, Metrolinx. So you tell us, who is Metrolinx? What is the connection with Go Transit? Sure. Uh, Metrolinx is the province of Ontario's regional transportation agency for the greater Toronto and Hamilton area, so for short, the GTHA. Go Transit, as you mentioned, is an operating division of Metrolinx, and Go Transit links the region using bus and train services. We carry more than uh, 57 million passengers in a year, and our network spans over 10,000 square kilometres. That's amazing. So you figure, I mean, with that kind of productivity and really good proper transit, it will take a lot of assistance helping out the economic disruption from congestion. I mean, I can't believe it. You know, today I was on my way down here. I mm-hmm. was downtown Toronto. Mm-hmm. Couldn't believe I got stuck on, of course, the Gardner or yep. QE Gardner, and then I ended up down in Lakeshore. Then I had to get over to the Don Valley. And I will tell you that if I was listening to radio shows, I'd be probably hearing about three of them. <laughs> no, <laughs> it took that long. It was, it was insane. You're right. Uh, congestion is an issue in, in the greater Toronto-Hamilton area, and Metrolinx has adopted uh, the big move, which was released in 2008. It's a bold 25-year plan to implement a common vision for transportation in the greater Toronto and Hamilton area. So one of the largest fast and fastest growing urban regions in North America is the GTHA, and we were facing a gridlock problem. And the solution is the big move. So the big move, it's an integrated plan that takes a regional view and includes all modes of transportation, including rapid transit, cycling, and alternative modes of transportation, not necessarily the car, to get people moving and to decrease commute times and spend more time with family, friends, and doing other things other than commuting. Oh, exactly. And, you know, I heard that it will actually support over 800,000 new jobs in the greater Toronto-Hamilton region. You know, I was going on the website. (laughs) All of you listeners out there, you honestly, seriously do have to go on the Go Transit Metrolinx website and get into, uh, take a look at the big move. I mean, the... uh The kind of information they're giving on that is amazing. That's right. Right now, we're in the midst of uh, the big conversation. We need to get people engaged in the plan because the people are part of the plan. As you mentioned off the top, uh, funding is a big requirement. Large infrastructure projects that we're embarking on require funding, and we're looking at options on how to get that funding so we can put shovels in the ground and get moving on building transit. Exactly. Well, you know, condo owners, I mean, the cost of effectiveness for condo owners alone, I mean, over here here in the Strand, the Strand Community Office, you're right in the heart of condominiums. Yeah, you're right. We look out our community office and go for a short walk, and there's uh, condos being built every corner you look. And Strong Community Office is right in the midst of Liberty Village, which is a really, really well-known condominium development and a city within a city itself. Mm -hmm. And what the Strong Community Office is part of the Georgetown South Project. So the Georgetown Mm -hmm. South Project is one of the key elements of the big move. So shovels are in the ground. They have been since uh, 2010. And what Georgetown South Project will provide is infrastructure for the new Union Pearson Express. It's an innovative train service that will connect two of the busiest hubs in Toronto, and so I, being Union Station. I and hear it's completed in 2015. That's correct. I'm right. That's correct. Right. 2015, uh, we'll have 25-minute service between Pearson Airport and Union Station at every 15 minutes. And can you imagine? I mean, doesn't that make a big difference for people? And cost. I mean, cost effectiveness. I know that if you had to take a cab... 
Now, actually, thinking about that, how's that going to affect the, the uh, taxi and the uh, limousine industry? Because I know if you took a t- cab from the airport to go down to Union Station, you've got to be looking at what? $50, $60? It has to be. Uh, typically, I think they run uh, with flat rates, so yeah, right. that's a, probably a good ballpark. As far as cost is concerned, we're still working on our costing strategy. We're still mm-hmm. a couple years out. Economies of scale may change, so we're still working on as far as what the cost will be. Right. But the service will definitely be something that is unique to Torontonians and to visitors to the city. It'll be quicker. The premise of the Up Express is to be innovative. Mm-hmm. and to have services like checking in on the train or at the right. um, stations. So it will be uh, something that I think the city uh, really needs. Oh, 100%. Well, you know, Europe. I mean, Europe is so far ahead. They really seriously are. I, we were in Paris. I was oh, gorgeous. Gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous city. And we were in Paris, and I couldn't believe the underground connections of rail that they have going on. I was just absolutely enamored by it. Well, out of the major 25 financial hubs around the world, Toronto Mm -hmm. is the only one that doesn't have a direct link between their downtown and airport. So glad to see that uh, Metrolinx is leading the the change to bring about a service like the Union Pearson Express. So um, on a world stage, we're on par, and just locally, the benefits that come from the construction, as you mentioned, jobs, just operation. When the operation is actually unfolded, there'll be jobs from there as well. So we're really looking forward uh, for it to be launched. Oh, absolutely. You know, the uh, Union Pearson, I don't know, we got to put Mississauga in there somewhere. You know, the Toronto International Airport Mm -hmm. (laughs) is in Mississauga. So shout out, kudos to Mississauga, because we have a world-renowned airport. Yes. Yes, and I understand that the uh, mayor is trying to push to see if we can get a sign that says, Welcome to Mississauga, Mm -hmm. when the athletes come in for the Pan Am, and I guess out-of-country guests and so on, and visitors and tourists and tourism and so on coming into Mississauga, they're going to see Welcome to the Mississauga. Yeah. yeah. So people know about that. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, absolutely. i got to do the kudos. What can I say? (laughs) (laughs) You are listening to Linda Pinizzato at the Condo Expert on the Hayes FM. We'll be right back.